things to look for when you're asked to write the sum in summation notation when they give you kind of the sequence you're going in. How do you figure out what summation you're working with? So, of course, our answer to be written in summation notation will have the summation. Um, we'll have to have a starting value. You can use any variable you want, n, k, i, whatever you like. But down here at the bottom, we'll have to say which number we're starting with, and up at the top, we'll put in which number you're ending with. Um, perhaps the hardest part is finding out what you're adding together, what's your expression that goes there. So the first thing I notice when I look at this sequence is that I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, all even numbers. When you're dealing with even numbers, it's probably because you took 2 times something, since even numbers are always divisible by 2. So anytime you're dealing with all even numbers, you're probably dealing with something like 2n, if we chose n as our variable. Um, if n is 1 for our starting term, let's make sure this works out OK. 2 times 1 would give us 2 for the first term. 2 times 2 would give us 4, then move to 3. 2 times 3 would give us 6. So that's looking OK. The other thing I notice is that I have alternating signs. I have positive 2, negative 4, positive 6, negative 8, positive 10. And so I have alternating signs. Now, that I picked this on purpose because um, this is another thing that will come up. When you have alternating signs, what you want to do is have negative 1 raised to a power. Now, it just depends on where the negatives and positives are. So you want to test it out. Um, if we tried negative 1 to the n power, notice we check our first term. If we put that in there, um, the first term would then be negative 1 to the first power times 2 times 1. And that would give us a negative 2. We don't want that, so we need to offset it by 1. We're going to raise it instead to the n plus 1 power. That What that will do is it will shift it over. And when we're dealing with odd numbers, it's going to give us an even power. Now let's try that out. The first term, if we use negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 2n, the first term would be negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 power times 2 times 1. That gives us negative 1 squared, or positive 1, times 2, or 2. So our first term is good. I'm going to try the second one just to make sure I'm doing OK. When we go up to 2, we'd have negative 1 to the 2 plus 1 power, times 2 times 2. That gives us 2 to the, or excuse me, negative 1 to the third power, which is negative 1. 2 times 2 is 4. That gives us negative 4, which is what we wanted. We'll go one more. Just to be positive, we're doing OK here. Um, when n is 3, we'd have negative 1 to the 3 plus 1 power times 2 times 3. That gives us negative 1 to the 4th power, which is positive 1 times 6, which is positive 6. So we're looking good. That looks like a correct answer to me. Our answer is the summation of negative 1 to the n plus 1 power times 2n, starting at n equals 1. And now we just need to figure out where we're going to end this at. What do we put at the top there? Well, our last number is 10. Since it's 2n, we're going to divide that by 2. So if n is 5, we'd have 2 times n is 10. So we're going to go from n being 1 to n being 5 of negative 1 to the n plus 1 power times 2n. OK, here is a new sequence. 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 4 fifths. First thing I notice, they're all fractions. And <laughs> second thing, I need to find some sort of pattern here. Notice that as I go, the bottoms are going up by 1 every time, or the denominators. Let's get technical. <laughs> The top is also going up by just 1 every time. OK? So that tells us that that's just natural. As we have a summation, we start with a number, and we go one up 1 every time. The next thing that I notice is in each fraction, the denominator is just 1 bigger than the numerator. So here we have 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4. 
So if I start out with my fraction and the numerator is n, that means I can start at 1. I want the denominator to be 1 bigger than that every time. So I'm going to make the denominator n plus 1. Okay. If I start at n equals 1, my first term would be 1 over 1 plus 1. I want to try this out. Just make sure it works okay. Give me 1 half, which is what my first term was. Let's go to n equals 2 and make sure this still works. That would give me 2 over 2 plus 1, or 2 thirds. Okay, my pattern is looking okay. I know I started n equals 1. Now I just need to find out where should I stop. So I look at that last term. It's 5 over 6. So our last n is going to be 5. Because that would give me 5 over 5 plus 1, or 5 6 as my last term. So my answer here is the summation from n equals 1 to n equals 5 of n over n plus 1. Okay, we have two more examples here. And this one I'm going to try and look for a pattern. I start with 1, 3, 9. I know I'm not going up by the same amount every time, okay, because I go up by 2. And then 3 to 9 gives me 6, and 9 to 27, that's an even bigger leap. But if you look at the last term here, notice that it's 3 to the 12th power. And that was very kind of them, because what that makes us think is, well, maybe these are all 3 raised to a power. Um, well, this is 3 to the 1st power, and 9 is 3 to the 2nd, and 27 is 3 to the 3rd, and 1 is 3 to the 0 power, since anything to the 0 power is 1. So notice what we're doing each time is just raising 3 to the next power. So, super, we start at n being 0. Our expression is 3 to the n power. We go from 0 to the last one has 3 raised to the 12th power. So that number up top is going to be 12. And slick as ever. We have the summation from n being 0 to n being 12 of 3 raised to the n power. Okay, so you can come with all kinds of different patterns that occur. This last one I wanted to go over because it's easy to get mixed up on. Um, and it kind of goes back to our last lesson, which was on sequences, arithmetic, and geometric. Now, the natural thing that most people like to do first on something that looks like this is to look at it and say, oh, look. They're going up by 4 every time, because it is. It's 4 larger. The next term is always 4 larger. So what someone might be tempted to do is say, oh, I know what it is. It's n plus 4. And I'm going to start with n being 8. Well, notice this doesn't end up working out. Okay, The first term would work out. I'd have 8 plus 4 is 12. But when I go to n being 9, the next term, 9 plus 4, is 13. Okay, it's only taking me up by 1. So this doesn't work. That's your first, the first natural thing to think of, but it's not correct. <laughs> so um, in the new textbook, it talks, gives an example like this, and it takes you back to your previous lesson where you talked about arithmetic sequences which this is arithmetic, we know because each term is just adding the same number 4. And when we uh, found these, remember we said, oh, well, our d, or our difference between each term is 4. <clears throat> so we're going to use this to find out what expression we're using. Again, this came straight out of your textbook. So it says for n being greater than or equal to 1, so that tells us if we start at 1, we can find the nth term by using this formula, a plus n minus 1 times d, where d is our difference, our common difference, which was 4, as we looked at that pattern. n is just n. Okay, a is the first term in the sequence, so a is 12. Okay, because that was the first term in our sequence. Now let's simplify this. We'd have 12 plus as we distribute the 4, to get rid of those parentheses, we'd have 4n minus 4. And if we simplify that, we have 4n plus 12 minus 4 gives me 8. Okay? And that's starting at 
and being greater than or equal to 1. And I just pulled this straight out of your textbook. Okay? From our lesson about sequences. So let's try that out. Okay? If we start at n equals 1 and we use 4n plus 8, does that work? You always want to double check. Well, if n is 1, we'd have 4 times 1 plus 8 which is 4 plus 8, or 12. If n is 2, we'd have 4 times 2 plus 8. 8 plus 8 is 16, which is good, because that was the next term. That's what it's supposed to be. If n is 3, we have 4 times 3 plus 8, or 12 plus 8, hmm. which is 20. So it looks like, yes, this works out awesome. So we just use this formula given to us in our textbook with A being the first term and D being the common difference, whatever the difference was between each set of terms. Now the only thing we need to know is what to put up here. Where are we ending at? So we take our last term, 28. We want to know what N we have for 4N plus 8 to be 28. And if we just solve that, it'll give us the answer. So if I subtract 8, I get 4N equals 20. And that tells me when n is 5. You could also just follow your your little expression here until you get to 20, it equaling 28. Okay, two ways to do that. So this sum, written in summation notation, is 4n plus 8 from n equals 1 to n.